Sure. Okay. Hi, my name's Ian Naylor. Uh, I'm a, a serial entrepreneur, uh, most recently a co-founder of a business called Hyperize, uh, which is a hyper-personalization uh, toolkit. Prior to that, um, I founded four other SaaS businesses, uh, Chat Whale. Um, probably App Institute is one that people are most likely heard of because we have hundreds of thousands of, of customers worldwide. Uh, and prior to that, um, a couple of other um, B2, uh, B2C um, SaaS businesses. Cool, cool. So just tell us a little bit about App Institute before we dive into this new thing that you found. About <laughs> what is it that you guys have been doing at App Institute then? Yeah, sure. So essentially, um, App Institute is a, a no-code um, tool, uh, and it allows the creation of, of mobile apps, native mobile apps, to be published into the app stores. But allows um, it's effectively um, focused towards small businesses. So it allows a business owner, you know, typically you know, a retail or um, hospitality or health and beauty type business, uh, to create a mobile app, you know, for for selling things or loyalty or bookings, etc. Uh, and with no code, just a drag and drop system, and they can get their app published wow. in the app store. Um, for essentially, it's, it's a SaaS, so it's obviously a, a subscription-based business. Yeah. Um, but for typically fifty pounds a month, you know, you can have a fully functional app, you know, in uh, Android and iOS. You wow. know, take advantage of things like push notifications and all of that sort of stuff, uh, which where typically, you know, before platforms like App Institute, you might be paying fifty, sixty thousand pounds for the creation of a mobile app, you know, for similar yeah. functionality. So uh, appinstitute.com, is that right? Appinstitute.com, yeah, we've, that business I founded uh, in, it was 2010, yeah, that's the one. Oh, it even works on a mobile, even better. Yeah, yeah it looks great on a mobile. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we have um, over 100,000 businesses using our platform to build mobile apps worldwide. Um, yeah, predominantly non-UK, non um, so you know, it's a true, true kind of digital online global business. Awesome. Cool. So, um, and uh, you, you've now got your site set on uh, something completely different, Hyperize, yeah? Hyperize, yeah, absolutely. So, I, I, um, I give full credit, uh, uh, Hyperize, to my partner. Um, you know, we, we've worked on several businesses together pre, um, pre App Institute um, when I was doing some B2C businesses. And she, by, uh, by trade, is, is a designer. So, she's very much into kind of some of the core elements of Hyperize, you know, which is kind of image creation. But she's seen as we've worked together on various startups, one of the most effective, uh, I guess, customer acquisition strategies we've done um, is this high personalization, you know, co coordinated um, with, with email marketing. Um, and she was the one that said, well, look, okay, you know, I've seen, you know, over several businesses, you know, the common thread is this, you know, this one strategy again and again. Isn't that the isn't that the business? Isn't that the tool? You know, which is essentially the you know the idea of kind of where Hyperize came from. So, uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, I, well, whilst it's me here talking to you, it should really be um, my partner. It's really her, her baby. But, um, she, we we have a new baby, and so she's very very busy with that. Oh wow! Congratulations. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. A girl or a boy? It's a little girl. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, you, how on earth are you finding the time to launch a new business? Then? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's um it's it's a good question. Um, and why? <laughs> well, well, why why indeed? I, I think sometimes when an idea is um, a good one, um, then it's um, it's sometimes you know too good to pass up. Um, but yeah, we, <clears throat> excuse me. So with my partner, you know, she, like I say, Ember, to give her a name, our, our new daughter. You know, she's kind of coming on six months now. So you know, Becky's okay. kind of coming on nigh on a year since she's done yeah. any work. So um, you know, she's kind of getting to the point where um, she she's going to get ready back to work. Um, okay, and cool. you know, we, we've been getting high price to the point where it's it's read, ready for launch as well. So the kind of the two are kind of yeah. working in parallel yeah, yeah. together. So it was, it, there was there was a um, kind of method in our madness. Yeah, some synchronicity going on there. Exactly, cool. Okay, yeah. so are you going to uh, are you going to show us what uh, are you going to show us a screen share or something or yeah, how do you want to do that, it? That'd be great. Yeah, let me okay, jump. Cool. Uh, let me uh, just uh, find the right button. Uh, here we go. Right, hopefully you should be able to see my screen. Maybe yes, I, I can see your screen. Ahead. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so I'll just um, kind of talk you through uh, kind of, I guess, first of all, the premise of, of Hyperize, um, and then we can kind of jump into the, the specifics of the application. So ultimately, the, the premise of Hyperize um, is around hyper-personalization. So really what that means 
is you know we've all we've all anybody that's done any sort of level of email marketing will be familiar with the phrase of personalization you know, yeah i love it put a name in the subject that will get you better open rates yeah. put some personalization in oh, the yeah. body that will get you a better click through rate absolutely so there's nothing, nothing new about personalization but yeah hyper personalization kind of takes that concept to the next level so you know don't just stop at putting somebody's name or company name in an email you know take your product or service and personalize it to um you know the recipient to the prospect so yeah. for example let's let's rewind you know careers and think about app institute what we do is you know we we have a platform that allows a small business to create a mobile app so the hyper personalization for that would be send them a picture of their app already built so here's an app for your coffee shop it's wow. already got your coffee shop logo in it you know so it's yeah. a picture of your app so it's kind of like steve jobs used to say um, you know in the apple store the, the the angle of the screens were off um off from kind of the ideal viewing angle so people would want to touch it and readjust it and it's about you know putting the product um in in the customer's hand okay so when you can almost predict the future by saying hey Here's, here's a mobile app and it's not just a John Doe or, you know, ACME, Acme or whatever it is, you know, generic company business. It's right. your business. It resonates with you. <laughs> so you're doing two things there with, with that personalization using kind of uh, personalized images. You're, 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 you're kind of painting the future. You're saying this is what your app's going to look like, but you're also creating what I call a pattern interrupt. So if somebody opens, you know, we all get a lot, a ton of cold emails or unsisted emails, and a lot of them get deleted, you know, before we really get to consume uh, the, the true email because, you know, yeah. you've got, you can't, you don't, you wouldn't have time if you read every single email. You know, you'd spend, it'd literally be your, your day's work. Um, but if you create a pattern interrupt, something that stops somebody and, you know, takes a second to, to look at that. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, then you've got a, a much better chance uh, of them co then consuming the whole Good email. And, yeah, 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 cool. Exactly. So, um, so that personalization, taking it a step further, you know, so if, if for example, if I was to sell SEO um, services, what I might do is send um, a picture to, you know, some, some prospects of me looking at their website. So here I am in front of my laptop yeah. and on screen of my laptop is, you know, is their website. Wow, so that's clever. Proof. You know, so, you know, and we can do all the, so we, we basically what Hyperize does, it allows the creation of those images, uh, like dynamic images. Okay, uh, so let me just hold you there for a second, because technically you could do that if you were using something like Photoshop, or if you were using a, uh, an application like Paint, you could maybe copy it and paste it across, but that's going to take you... Um, I mean, that, that would take at least a couple of minutes per, per person. So obviously that's why we're not doing a lot of this type of hyper personalization because it just takes too much time. So what you're saying is that you've, you've used some kind of a technology to, to try and resolve that problem, give people a, a hyper personalization without the time, is that, without the time pain. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what we allow or enable is to do personalization at scale. Um, and that, that's kind of the first one. So let me just quickly jump into the images section of, of um, Hyperize. Um, so we've got a, a bunch of example images here, but what I'll do is I'll just create, um, create you know, so we've got a blank canvas here. Um, and what I could do is I could choose, um, I'm just gonna choose something kind of uh, really, really simple. Uh, let's just choose a cutesy one rather than a, a serious one. So what we've got here is a picture of a you know, little cute dog. Yeah, I'm and loving maybe what, what, what I want what I want to do is drag in. I've got a logo here, so this is a dynamic yeah. element here. So I'm just going to put a little logo there, and maybe just put that uh, over there. So this and is then, an email that you're designing, or is this a landing page, or is this, this just is an image? Just, just just an image. Right. Okay. So okay. Yeah. This is just an image, and then we can we what we can do is we can put, use this image anywhere. So we can use it on a website. We could use wow. it. On email. We could even use it on an ad. You know, so we could oh, use it uh, within, no you know, within Facebook or. Uh, uh, okay, so um, I could put this into an email then. Absolutely. Yes. So, so look, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time just creating. No, no, no. It's great. I'm loving it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, what we've got there is a real simple thing. I've dragged on two personalized elements there. We've got the business name and we've got the logo. Yeah. Okay. Um, what we can also do is um, add in data sources. So, for example, we, um, I've added an enrichment in there, but we've got a ton of data sources. So, if yeah. you use MailChimp, or you use Intercom, or you use Shopify, you know, or Drip, or Aweber, or yeah. any, any, pretty much any any uh, marketing software you care to mention, we yeah. you know we integrate with. So 
I think we've created this very simple um, illustration here. So what we've got here's our image with no yeah. personalization. Now what I'm going to do, um, if I just put in uh, uh, Institute or so I, 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 you, uh, you, I notice I go quiet when I type. Don't worry, <laughs> I, I can, it's absolutely I can, fine. <laughs> I think we're all waiting to see what happens. Oh my! Yeah, so, so you saw, you wow. saw I, was, yeah. I, was, I was talking. So let me let me just put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so where's it got the logo from then? Is that a, a Google it, API or is that what? It's, I mean, it's part of our our our. We have effectively a, a data enrichment service. So from an email yeah. or a domain. So look, I could take away. Um, the email address just from the domain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the logo and the name. You know. Of, so, can of you tell business. us where that comes from? I mean, is that a is that a Gravatar or is it what service is that? Yeah. So, this essentially it comes from about two hundred different sources. So, Gravatar, Facebook, Twitter. Wow. Um, sc scraping the website. Yeah. Um, yeah. there's, a, there's a service called Full Contact. Uh, it's literally this. That's great. I love it. Two hundred. And what we've done is we've taken all of those sources and all of that aggregated data, um, you know, and, and and pulled it together. So it allows you to do that, you know, super quick. Right. So, okay. Yeah, we we could kind of. Um, so is that is that does does the data if a client is using this. Does their contact data have to already have been researched and cataloged in your database, or is this working live on no. the fly? We can upload anything, right? Okay, yeah, so it's I'm, using APIs and it's saying, okay, App Institute, where's the, where's the logo for that? Or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Here, I'll grab it and I'll put it into this email. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly it's brilliant. Right. I love it. Yeah, I love so, that. Yeah. So you know what we can do. Wow. Um, you know we can get really sophisticated with these with these images. You know in terms of you know we've got layer controls and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. And like, like I said before, the, the really interesting ones are when you get product related uh, ones. Uh, yeah. You know, so we, with App Institute, you know, we we have some some really uh, here's an example one of um, the personalization. So in here, the map, for example is specific to the user. So this will base on the business location, the about us information on this app, the logo, the business name. You yeah. know, this, this image probably has about 10 points of personalization that will change yeah. depending on, the, and, and then essentially what we can do. Oh, so that's, a, that, that's actually a picture. That's not a picture of a real phone with a, a, a real screenshot. That's actually a, a, a generated yeah. picture. Okay, yeah, I like that's that. Fine. Okay, yeah, look at that, so yeah, cool. I mean, so you can see here on we've got all the different layers. So you know we've got um, a, a, a map layer, for example. You know logos and all yeah. these different elements and all of the you know. So we've got like a map here. Let's see, we can drop a map on, you know, yeah. and that will drop a pin in the map. Um, you know, related to the business. No the way, really? Wow. Yeah, that's you know, and we can, I we love can do that. that with web screenshots. Wow. App screenshots. You know, if the, if the business with prospect has an app, all of those sort of things. So, like, so you can either. You may have that data already. You may already have, you know, um, a prospect data. You may already yeah. have all of that kind of detailed, enriched data, or not. And if you don't have it, you know, we, we can enrich it on the fly. Um, some things take a little bit longer. So yeah. most images can just, you know, be rendered and created sub second. If you're wanting to have like a website screenshot, then obviously, you, and, and we've not cached that already, then you're in the hands of how long it takes for their website to load. You know? So there's obviously some technical restrictions, but even if you know it's an uncached, unloaded, and a slow website, the image will still display in, in like yeah. a second or two. So okay. you know, in those cases, if we've used the image in like a cold email, for example, you know, we might put the image like the second sentence down. So, you know, so if the time they've read the first sentence, the image is displayed and, you know, you've got that pattern interrupt. So um, for the map, do you only need the postcode as, uh, yeah. as a column in your list? So if I've got the email address, first name, last name, company name and postcode, is that all I need in order for that image to, yeah. to, to um, grab a, a picture of, of where, the, where the client is or prospect is? Yeah, ultimately, the, the, what we care about for the map is, is a latitude and longitude. So that's kind of what the map has as an input. It, but, you know, so you could, if you really want to get granular providers with a latitude and longitude, and obviously most people don't have that. So no. you know, we, we'll default back to whatever you've got. So if you've given us a postcode, great, we'll take that because that's almost as good as latitude and longitude. Yeah. If you yeah. haven't have given us a postcode, we'll take the city name. And, you will, and obviously you're getting less of course, yeah. accurate. Yeah. You know, and if you don't have the city name, then... If you've got, if you've given us a website but no other 
uh, location data, we'll try and find the business yeah. location from. But most people have got a city name, yeah. I mean, I and yeah. I, I because they, especially when I'm working with clients, they they normally do some prospecting by location. So they'll target, yeah. you know, solicitors in London, or they'll target manufacturers in in Birmingham. So they normally do have that information available to them. So what you're yeah. saying is that if that information is fed in to your system then you will be able to create a rough location of where that company is and you'll be able to show that as an image. Exactly right. Wow, exactly that's brilliant. Right. I love that. Yeah, so I mean, for example, uh, let me just uh, jump to the main... Uh, yeah, because I'm asking a lot of questions and slowing you down here. But yeah. No, 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 not at all. I just wanted to kind of um, show you some examples and, some, and pictures. So, hey, look, this is a great sales one. You know, how many, how many sales guys reach out and say, hey, can I buy you a coffee? You know, so... Very simple, just, oh an image, just with the user's name on it, you know. Uh, and so these are all personalized to Elon Musk, right? So every image you'll see. So here's just an illustration of what we do. So hyper-personalization is about extending the personalization throughout the whole sales funnel. So, you know, we send an email that's personalized. Then, you know, they go, the email leads to a sales page, which has personalized images on it. You know, and, and then if they don't buy or you want to re-engagement, re-engage them, then you, know, you re-engage them with that same personalized image, you know, using Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, Can I just yes. pause you there? I've got a very quick question. So in sure, a please. lot of the emails that we deliver, the person has got to click on display uh, images. They, they don't display by default because we don't use inline images. I'm, I'm assuming that they would have to click on the display images on those email clients that require that in order to see this work in action. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, essentially they're just still normal images from, from yeah. an email browser okay. perspective. So okay. um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that would be the case. I, yeah, I, yeah, cool. More, more, more uh, from our perspective, you know, we, we're, we're going more for the B2B customer where they tend to be using clients. So that's less, less and less the case now, you know, yeah. more, um, it automatically you know, uh, displays the browser. images. Yeah, it's that's my Online. audience as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, yeah, so I won't labour these. I love the much. cup. So you can change the font and everything, and and that. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. the next yeah. person that gets it would be Duncan or Joanne or whoever it is that's. I exactly. love that. Yeah. So actually, you know, th this tool is almost going to be. Um, you, you've got to be quite a creative person to get the most out of this tool, I guess. Yeah, I, th I think so. You know. Ultimately, you know, a tool is only as good as uh, yeah. the hands it's in. You know, Absolutely. hands up. I, I'm not um, a graphic designer at, at all, uh, and so when when the images that I create in this platform versus, like, say, my partner, who, you know, who is is a designer by trade, hers look much better. But you know, we're using the same tool, so you know, I, I think this isn't going to make our tool set. Certainly, isn't going to make you a better designer overnight um, oh. but what I think works you know best is you know within our platform we have uh, maybe 80 or so um, kind of default images uh, that, that can be used you know that, that yeah, kind of that, that kind of shortens the gap if you like skill set maybe um, you know from um, <clears throat> how do I get rid of that oh. <laughs> So what it what it is going to make us do though is it's going to make people, you know, you, you're going to have you're going to make people use their brains because at the moment a lot of people just drag in their standard image from their eye stock or whatever it is they drag it in. Now you can actually go so much further with that because you can do so much personalization inside that stock image. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, That's in this right. case. This um, you know, in this one, it's, this is kind of vibing off a similar kind of, let me buy your coffee, let me buy your lunch. You know, we've just got the name on the bag, but also, you know, got a website that would be familiar to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is the one that I was kind of referring to before. If I was doing SEO, for example, you know, this is the sort of thing I would send out, you know, where the image here, you know, is their website. So look, hey, we just all looked at your website earlier and we've got some great ideas for you from a, an SEO, from a design, you know, whatever your service base, you know, if you've got digital services, you know, an, an image like that would really kind of get, give, really give you that pattern interrupt, which is ultimately, you know, what it's about. Um, this is a kind of a cheeky one from a sales perspective. You know, if, if you've, um, you know, want to kind of do a sales call and have a, you know, a, a, you know, have a picture of your team, you know, uh, and the, you know, your prospect details on this whiteboard, you know, that we're yeah. going to kind of, uh, get to, that really, um, really helps. This is an image that we use in our own onboarding. So we use Intercom. So when somebody signs up for Intercom, we, you know, we put our images in there. So we say, hey, thanks for signing up and you know, put a nice little personalized image in the welcome email. You know, um, 
So in the case, hi, Elon, it's Becky, my co-founder. Uh, you know, thanks for signing up. And this so is, this is, this when is you, uh, uh, so I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting so excited here. You're going to have to just bear with me for a second because I've got the questions coming thick and fast now. So sure. let's say, for instance, that I have um, got these images now that are being pers hyper-personalized for the people yeah. that I'm sending the emails to. Can I... Um, can I use that image also on my website? Am I able to put that somewhere yep. where I know that person's going to land and, and, and so I can continue that hyper-personalized journey for them or is it just appearing in the email and then it's finished? No, no, no not at all. So what we've, we've got this concept of what we call hyper-campaign um, and essentially what that allows us to do um, is you know, we can select any of, any of our um, images and what our images do when they're displayed they create uh, an audience, a retargeting, a remarketing audience. So you can see here, here's, here's a list of all of the images, image templates that we've created. Um, for example, you know, um, we've got this one here, blow your socks off, you know, uh, which is a cheeky kind of picture and it's got personalization. It's got the name of this chair belongs oh to. Oh my goodness, underneath. look at that. Um, and so then what we do is we select our data source, you know, so this one might be used in Intercom and we've got an audience of 284 people here that have seen that I image. I'm oh, sorry. So Series this might be in. used in data in intercom. Oh, you mean? What do you mean by yeah, that? So, so we sent so in this case this particular um, uh, image. The data th that goes into the image, either username and, and the user logo, etc. That's all stored within intercom because that's where our, our customers go in that case. You know, that's our onboarding tool. So okay. we can embed this image into an intercom sequence and so that's where the data comes so we we don't store it on hyperize servers or anything like that it's all stored on intercom and intercom inject their data automatically into the image when they send it out you know as part of our integration okay so so, so now what we've got is we've got these uh, this is a beautiful funnel just in itself you've got an email through to a landing page and then you've got a remarketing ad i mean that you know it, it's so beautifully presented i love that so um i have now got let's say i've got a mailchimp account and i'm sending out or active campaign or a spiro mail or one of these big systems let's say that i go to my email i've got it created how do i get it into my platform is that the code for it or i just copy and paste yeah, exactly yes yeah. so you've got the code here and this is the code um so depending on whatever platform you selected you know you mentioned mailchimp there yeah yeah this, this image code has kind of merge tags related to the platform you selected so this merge tag here is specific to intercom but if you know if i created an image and added the data source of mailchimp then the the, 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 the merge code there would be a, a mailchimp one so essentially i just copy that code paste it into my email and intercom uh, and that's done now, I think the thing that you were interested in before was um, about the pixels in emails. So even if the user doesn't get to the sales page, still being able to drop a, a, a retargeting or remarketing pixel. So what we've also got is the code here already done for you that will track that specific user back to that specific personalized image from an email open. Right, okay, so what I'm seeing That's here, better. What I'm seeing here is that you'll create your email in MailChimp just like normal or a Spire yeah, mail yeah. or one of these things. I mean, we use a Spire mail because we're doing B2B prospecting and we need as much help as we can when we're doing B2B prospecting because we're going in cold and this stuff is music to my ears and it's what I focus on and, and it's all about relevancy and personalization at the moment. If the more relevant yeah. you are, the more engaged your audience will be. So I love this. Now, Therefore, what we're saying is that if I created my email, my HTML email in Aspire Mail, then I would come here for the image tag, yeah. which I can see as an IMGSRC tag, which is an yeah. image tag. Yeah. I would get that and I would then post that in, paste it in as though it was just an external image. So Correct. that exactly. then builds the image on the fly as the email yeah. is being delivered or is it as the email as, is being opened? Or? As, it's opened, as it's opened. Okay, wow. All right. So, And then obvious, you've also got the uh, remarketing pixel which you can put into your emails which helps you generate your retargeting or remarketing audience, audience yeah. which yeah. I love that. I didn't know that you could put a remarketing pixel from Facebook into your emails. But obviously that's how we track open rates anyway, isn't it? So I love that. Yeah. So I, to be honest, it's, it's, I don't know whether, um, I, whether Facebook um, really want you to do that because I'm it's, not sure. it's, it's not a documented function, no. but it's, I, I kind of stumbled across it when, you know, when yeah. we were doing this, you know, some, some years ago, yeah. because essentially the way Facebook pixel works, it's a JavaScript 
it yeah. works on the website. Obviously, you can't input JavaScript in an email because it's HTML. You know, it's it's kind of open in the browser, so the, all the JavaScript gets stripped out. Yeah. However, Facebook also have within their pixel um, a non-JavaScript option. So, you know, for the one percent of websites that have JavaScript um, disabled, they have a fallback option. That right, okay. fallback option does work within emails. <clears throat> so you can just remove all the JavaScript stuff and just put the fallback option. But then more specifically than that, you then have to kind of change it to allow it to link to that specific product. So later on right. down the line within Facebook doing the remarketing ads, it knows that you know it was John Smith that clicked on that link yeah. or opened that email. And this was the, 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 the picture that had you know, John Smith's company's details or John Smith's personal details or whatever. And can it link those two together? Our, our platform does all of that heavy lifting and thinking for you. All you okay. have to do is copy that code and paste it in the same way that you do. Um, yeah, yeah, the, just like yeah. you normally do. So yeah. then you go on to step two of the funnel here or the yeah. journey, the sales page. Yeah. Now, how does it know when the person has clicked through from that email, how does it know uh, who's on the website and what image to display then? Yeah, so um, what we do um, is... And this, we, I guess it's pixels, is it, or something, cookies? Yeah, so what, it's, it's a two-step thing. So directly from the email... Um, you would put in a link um, from the from the um, uh, sorry from the email where yeah. you've obviously got a link out to your sales. So, yeah, let's say that was going to emailmovers.com or, or exactly. yeah, exactly, so, yeah, sure. So, so what what you would do again? Our, our platform provides a link here. Um, so if I just put in example, because uh, this we're com. looking at an example here. This is why, yeah. Yeah. So for example, what we've got here is. Um, we, we're the sales page that this email is going to is example.com. So what we've got here is we have uh, just this additional element that we'll put in right. our email. Right, okay. It's question mark, UTM, hyperref equals yep. email. So we append that to our email. So when we get to when the link that we would be, um, go to on our sales page would be, you know, example.com, you know, UTM, hyperref, and then the email, um, in, in this case, um, intercom or MailChimp or whatever, you know, inspect, inspect email. Uh, so Inspire, did you say that you used? Uh, we use Aspire Mail for Aspire, the delivery Aspire of Mail. our emails, B2B prospecting, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so whatever tool that is, that would obviously replace the email with the actual value. Then that gets passed through to the sales page. So do I need to turn off my link tracking in my uh, platform because my link no, tracking no. sometimes changes the links now? No, it shouldn't do. It should still work. Okay, it's still, all right, still, yeah, cool. It's, it's, it's not changed. It's, it's, you know, it's, it might wrap around that link. Okay, you know, cool. Yeah, else, yeah. But it, it, does, it wouldn't affect the link itself. So the person clicking through, the email is going to come in as a tag now, and that's how yeah. you know on the sales page yeah. what to display yeah. in the image. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And so the, okay. the, the images um, then also store that within a cookie. So say, for example, you imagine the journey, you know, the first user journey is they receive the email, they click the link, they get to the sales page, the, the email has told the sales page what to display, right? What, yeah. what the image needs to display. Imagine then day two, right? You, you're not necessarily going to go back to the email. You're probably now just going to go to the sales page direct because you've got that, you've maybe bookmarked it. It's, you know, it might still be in your browser or whatever, you know, or it will kind of remember it. So at that point, you don't need the URL because it will, it, the cookie will tell it because it already knew last time I showed this image, I knew that I had to put Ian or I had to put the, you know, the, the Hyperize logo or, or, or whatever. It was, it was, so the cookie will stores all the information for, you know, for subsequent visits until you give it a different bit of information. Okay, so then we're going through from the sales page and then a few days later we get this remarketing campaign and because yeah. you've used the same, now do we actually have to upload anything here or is it because you put no. the remarketing pixel in earlier that this is automatically doing the work now, yeah? Correct, absolutely. We've got wow. an automation situation here where we can set up our, our catalog uh, and then that will automatically, as soon as an image is viewed somewhere by somebody, as long as you know you, we've added in uh, our, our source code here or kind of yeah, yeah. here, uh, then that, that will that will connect all the dots. Wow, um, I love and, it, Ian. <laughs> or, or <laughs> upload the details to okay. um, Facebook. So, you know, you've got all of that, all of that data, parameterized, personalized data with, ready to use within your Facebook ads by using creating dynamic ads. Okay, so how, I mean, I've got the inevitable question is, what are we looking at in terms of costs then? How, how does it work commercially? 
from, from our perspective, uh, so we have uh, we have three pricing points. I'm going to have to have a look. <laughs> I can't remember this on my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, we, you built we, it. Uh, uh, it's free. It's free. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So we have um, seed growth and blossoming. Um, okay. Our, uh, just vibing off our whole kind of growth. Um, Does it seed. work on the number of images that are pulled? It is. Or? It's, yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm a big component of of giving everybody everything they need to be successful. You know, you, yeah. you see a lot of software where you know you have like a, a lower subscription where you get 10% of the tools and a mid subscription where you get a few extra bits and it's yeah. only in, in the full package you get all the bells and whistles. But really what you're doing there is you're, you're penalizing smaller businesses. Absolutely. Saying, you know, yeah. you know, you, you, you know, just because you've got less customers or you need to do less of something doesn't mean that you don't need all of the tools. You know, for yeah. example, you know, we could say, well, we're not going to give you the hyper campaign unless you're, you know, going our blossom campaign, which to me, I just think is, is just counter, you know, counterproductive or counterintuitive. So what I think um, was, was a, a, a core element for us was give everybody everything they need uh, and all the only price difference or the only difference um, that the pricing it really gives is the number of uh, image impressions. Okay, so what so, are we looking at in terms of so, image impressions? Yeah, so seed is a thousand image impressions, growth is 10,000 and blossoming, blossom, blossoming is a hundred thousand image impression. So, you know, obviously you kind of get higher value in terms of image impressions versus... Um, and those are opens, of course, aren't they? So that's open, if you're yeah, sending so, out to a hundred thousand people, I mean, we got a 14.1% open rate on our last prospecting campaign so if yeah. we were looking at 14,100 I'd be into the growth is that right what what did growth, growth yeah. say growth yeah 10,000 so 10,000 so I'd actually been to blossoming so for an extra $199 a month so let's say that it's about 160 170 pounds so with that the level of personalization that I could do within my platform within my campaign could be significant if, if now what about what happens if it can't get an image uh, last couple of questions what happens if it can't find an image what's the fallback position is it just a blank logo or no so I, <clears throat> so you there's lots of different choices actually um so for example going back to our choice here uh within with a logo where it's an actual image we, we can choose a default logo so so on, often kind of where i'm doing something like this i'll choose something like a love heart or okay badge, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, 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 okay you know or so you your logo here. Stuff so in you that, could okay. put something yeah so for, when it's an image um i can choose a default image you know which is something that's yeah. kind of still fine and when it's textual personalization um for a business name for example yeah. like I say if i haven't got business name uh, then maybe go with person's first name so business name fallback of last name and uh or first name and if i don't have first name then i can default back to um hey there you know or something yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that oh i see that's so, where you put your uh, fallback then okay so, so, this, this is, yeah. so uh, now what about a uh, if you don't on, have sorry. a business name we'll try the first name and yep. if you don't have the first name we'll try there so say hey okay. That it might say, hey, App Institute, if you couldn't find App Institute, then it would say, hey, Ian, if you couldn't find Ian, it would say, hey, there, in, in this case. Got you. Okay, so what about a, is there any kind of a trial or is there, is there something that... Okay, yeah, so there's a 14-day trial, um, which gives you um, a, a thousand image impressions um, and, you know, it, it gives you kind of full access to all the functionality. We also have lists. We haven't touched upon that. So as well as being able to enrich data you already have, you know, um, and you can upload your own data, um, you know, you can create a prospect list from scratch. So say, for example, um, again, I, I'm interested in selling my... I don't know, and my SEO services, I might look for somebody, um, you know, a web, web designer, for example. So I could say, uh, yeah, there, there's some web designers. So I say, hey, maybe, you know, I could supplement their existing service with SEO. I'm only interested in, in maybe in the United Kingdom. So I could say United Kingdom. And see so here we've got 7,749 web designers in the United Kingdom. And I might want to go any even further and say, actually, I'm only interested in ones that are in this kind of middle part of the UK. And I can update that and that should take a second or two. And that should tell us that you know, we've got 2,145 web designs in the UK. So I can save that list. And now I can, for those 2,145, you know, I can download the list as a CSV to put into another marketing platform. I can obviously run my images against it. 
um, you know, and so you kind of, we provide data as well. And so even within the trial, you have unlimited access to it's about 50, 50 million uh, small uh, B2B business records uh, in the platform as well. So essentially there's, there's three core parts of the platform, the images, the lists, and, and the, the hyper campaign. Uh, but yeah, with, with a 14 day trial, you get access, unlimited access to all of it for free with no, okay. no credit okay but you guys don't touch any i mean i can see you do the images i can see you also do some kind of list stuff but you don't actually do the delivery is that right it, it, no that, you that gotta that's right delivery partner. yeah um i mean the, the, re the reason for that um i guess there's a couple of things one is well more, more to the point of when, when we first envisage this platform for sure there was a a campaign you know send email element to that and maybe that would be the case in the future but you know i guess what you could call this this is our mvp you know a yeah, minimum yeah. Viable product, yeah, minimum it, viable product is the hyper campaign to be able to build audiences be able to remarket to them you know and do that thing but there's so many great email clients out there that we, we kind of almost saw it as a blocker you know if we're saying well we yeah. work with email and mailchimp what about everybody that uses active campaign? You know, can they not use our Absolutely, um, yeah. So no, I love it. Yeah. We, we, we spent probably just as much effort um, as, as we could have by building our own platform, by integrating with, you know, pretty much trying to keep it as a work, sort of work with everybody else's. And so far, that's, that's um, proven to be, um, you know, the, the right, right path. But also, the hypothesis was that if somebody's interested in this, they probably are already doing some element of email marketing, and they're just trying to improve or optimize that. So you know, we can build on, on top of that by in, you know, integrating into what they've currently done. If they had to then migrate to our email platform, that probably would be more of a blocker, you know, or more friction, if you like, to kind of do that. So our okay. philosophy was let's in, let's kind of support all the things that our potential customers will already be using. Okay, so um, that was wonderful. I really enjoyed that, Ian. I'm so glad that I got on this call with you. I'm so glad that you gave me your time to walk us through this. I do love this type of technology because it really does shout at the things that I'm trying to get across to my audience, which is in order to get a, an increase in engagement, you have to use relevancy, you've got to use personalization, you've got to use stuff that is more of a relationship that looks as though that person really understands you and, and knows what's going on. And this, this really speaks volumes to that. So. I really do appreciate your time. Now, um, can you just give me your website once more? It's um, what's the URL for Hyperrise? Just one last time. Hyperrise.com. So Hyperrise.com. Okay. Also, Duncan, we, have, we haven't discussed this prior, so I hope this is okay. But I'd love to be able to offer your um, your listeners, your audience, um, some discount. Um, I can yeah. share after the, after, share it after the call. Uh, maybe like a twenty percent um, discount code or something like that. that so would be absolutely you know, fabulous. Make it a little bit I'd love that yeah yeah no, that's we fantastic. will get that out to those guys yeah okay that's fantastic cool. okay ian so um thank you very much for that i myself am going to test this so uh, if anybody wants to watch what results i get um with my own stuff stay tuned and i will try and get something up probably in a couple of weeks time after i've had a good look at it um, if you want to use it yourselves, just go to hyperrise.io and register. And, and Ian said that he might be able to give us a discount. So just check the comments below. There might be that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Is there anything else you want to add there, Ian, before we log off? Um, I, I mean, I guess just the, the thing that's, that's for me that's really exciting is like you mentioned before there, um, the open rate. This isn't really something that's going to massively affect open rate. But one of the th one of the pushbacks that you say or one of the concerns that um, people have mentioned before uh, was including images in emails you know how that can affect your open rate or your delivery rate um, you know of the email and we've done quite a lot of testing around that and actually haven't seen a any real adverse effects um, we've worked with a a another client recently um, Hubstaff and they they, um, we, they they had a similar sort of concern or question around that and so we did two campaigns you know, AB tested in parallel uh, in, can, the same cold email um, using the same data, um, but with some with um, some with images and some without. And what we saw was the open rate was, was pretty much actually, if anything, it was slightly better. But I think that was just uh, kind of just 
uh, just uh, not, not just to, do, to the image, but the, the, the open rate was pretty much the same. But what was different was the conversion rate beyond that. So oh, the, yeah. emails, the emails with yeah. no image had a 3% conversion rate, um, whereas the images, so the emails with images in, with the personalized images, had 11% conversion rate. Like conversion or click through? Sorry, uh, yeah, conversion through to a trial. So somebody clicking the, the call wow. to action in the email was start a trial. So that was a conversion rate to kind of, so yeah, okay. click through rate, conversion rate in this case was the same. But well, I'm going to be testing was, that myself. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, you know, like I say, we've, we've done this um, with, like I say, I, I've been using this strategy, um, not necessarily at, at this level of scale because the solution is new, but with my last previous three or four SaaS businesses, and we, you know, we've seen similar sort of results. But I, I, I never like to talk about my own business because obviously, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm provided this tool, and I'm talking about my own, <laughs> my own business. It's, it's kind of maybe less uh, uh, genuine than talking about other clients that have, sure. that have had yeah. results happy to share. So yeah, so that was that was an amazing one. But yeah, we essentially we, we, we have this, you know, we, we worked on the twenty twenty rule, which was twenty percent open and twenty percent click. You know, for for a cold email, you know getting a four percent uh, conversion on that was um, was pretty cool I okay that is fantastic i love that and i think we're going to have a few more conversations in the future as i get to Lovely. grips with this and do some testing i appreciate that so much ian thank you so much for your time today okay i appreciate it thank you again take care